Is it true that the investigations into the rigging of silver market have suspended and somehow has this affected what spot values are trading at? Well, there's mixed, uh, there's a kind of a rumor put out by the Financial Times that there wasn't enough evidence to really follow through on this uh, last four year investigation. And then after that, Bart Chilton, who's the commissioner, came out and said that's not true. I don't know where they're getting their information. So as far as, I under, as far as I'm concerned, it's still ongoing. I do think they'll put out some type of written publication uh, defining what they find. I quite frankly think that they will quote unquote find something, but I think it'll be so vague, ambiguous, and really <clears throat> something that doesn't address the serious issues that have taken place over the last several years. But nonetheless, if the mainstream media looks at it, it'll probably be kind of whitewashed. And, oh, my goodness, look, this happened in the silver market. Jeez, what do you know? So that's my guess. Uh, several have written about it. You can probably spend a whole day reading on uh, opinions about this. You can have mine for what it's worth. It's just as valid as any other opinion, but no one knows until it either happens or it doesn't. I just have the view that... Um, you can't really look to government authorities to correct anything now. Uh, you look at what's happened to financial markets. There haven't been any convictions at all in the financial markets under the Obama administration. And I'm not picking on him, uh, just stating a fact. Even under Bush, there were like 42 convictions for financial fraud banking system and broker system. And there are none now. It just doesn't make any sense. So I just don't have much hope that there will be anything done at a high level that will correct any of these problems. I have purchased silver rounds from reputable mints, Sunshine, and then others. If and when the time comes, will I have an issue selling them back? No. Silver is silver. Silver is fungible. Fungible means that an ounce is an ounce is an ounce. I don't care if it's got a government stamp on it, a Sunshine Mint stamp on it, a kangaroo or a koala bear. It doesn't matter. Silver is silver. So you shouldn't have any problem selling it back. And most of the high premium stuff will lose their premium in a, in a, at the high of the market or as we're approaching the high. So that's something to bear in mind. Now there are people that just want to buy eagles or maples or something with the government stamp and that's fine. I understand that and if that makes you the most comfortable and they are the most liquid. In other words, you're not going to have a lot of problem convincing somebody this is real silver if it's got a US mint on it or a Canadian mint on it or an Australian mint on it or a Euro mint on it. And so again, if you want to pay that premium for that peace of mind, go ahead. But really when it comes down to it, it's fungible. An ounce is an ounce is an ounce. Except for an official announcement, hasn't the U.S. dollar already lost world reserve status? Do you expect an overnight revaluation of the U.S. dollar, similar to what Roosevelt did in the 1930s? Or do you see a gradual sell-off in the U.S. dollar as Europe resolves and it becomes apparent that our problems might be unsolvable? Great question. Yes, I agree. I think that really the de facto standard is that the U.S. dollar has lost reserve status. You look at uh, how much has gone on in the last two years, between Russia and China saying they'll trade for each other's currency, China and Japan saying they'll trade for each other's currency, and there are several others. So the dollar has been usurped in those cases, and so it continues. Uh, so yes, it probably has lost reserve status or is continuing to lose it. It's still kind of hanging on, so to speak. Do I expect an overnight revaluation or a steady, you know, not so steady, but a declining dollar? Kind of both. I don't rule out an overnight one unless there is a currency collapse that gets out of the hands of the authorities, which it easily could. In that case, they'd probably close the banks, have a banking holiday, revalue it to some artificial peg like oil and gold or who knows what they'll come up with, and revalue it. Or maybe they'll go to a global currency, which I think would be extremely difficult to do right now considering the political climate. So I actually see it more kind of more the same. A trend in motion continues, and the trend is a lower and lower dollar, and everybody's competing against each other's currency to make them go down, not up, not to be strong, but to be weak, to gain an ex export advantage. So these are complex issues, but uh, it's easy to predict that the trend that we have will continue than to say there'll be a bank run or a bank closure and they'll issue a new currency. However, the guys playing the game at the top, the paper pushers, the banking elite, uh, they're smart. They, they know what's the inevitable. And so they are probably prepared to do an overnight, um, you know, revaluation if necessary. I certainly wouldn't rule that out of my thinking, and I'm sure that they don't either. Currently, I have physical access to my silver, which is safely stored, but have considered transferring my silver to a facility for the ultimate security. My question is, with all the financial turmoil in the U.S. we are experiencing, 
as well as in the rest of the world with the possibility of a total collapse, if my silver were stored in an offshore facility, how difficult would it be to have my silver delivered to me physically? Well, I think he answered his own question, or she. Uh, it'd be very difficult. Uh, so that's why what I teach is, depending again on the individual, if you're high net worth, and I think unless you're in an apartment or whatever, you should keep some that uh, you have available to you. And of course, gold is so compact. I mean, you can have a, you know, a great deal of purchasing power in a small space with gold. Silver, of course, is you know going to take up about 60 times as much room for the equivalent of purchasing power. Regardless, I would not uh, put too much offshore. Could you get it? Probably. Would it be difficult? Most likely under the outline that he that he wrote. So balance it out. It's pretty simple, common sense stuff. I'm sure he he already knows that. He probably just wants you know verification on my part. Um, as far as you know, storage. If you are in an apartment or you're elderly or you have you know a vacation home and your other home is, you know, most places you can still hide it pretty easily. Um, so that's a consideration. I just feel more comfortable being able to go get, you know, a bag of silver whenever I want it and uh, know that uh, in the worst case scenario, I've got something that's easily uh, recognized as money, since that's really what it is and could be used. And I say could, not would, we don't know, but could be used in the event that I had to. In several interviews, you've stated that silver would probably reach the $40 level by year end and not hit new nominal highs. Would your outlook change should the Federal Reserve and the ECB engage in a massive, coordinated monetary stimulus program? No, it wouldn't. Uh, and this is opinion. They're asking me for that. I think that part of that's already built into the price. I think what's announced, you would, get, or if it's announced, and it probably will be, we'll have to see what happens after this Jackson Hole meeting. But I think you get a nice blip. I think there'll be a lot of uh, gold, silver bugs that either want to add to their positions or waiting to get in, or momentum players that will jump on the news. And I'm going to fizzle out. Uh, I'm not looking for that, particularly to move the market on the announcement. Over time, absolutely. So I don't want to be talking out both sides of my mouth, but I don't see it having to run that it had before. Let's just go back and I'll restate a little bit. Silver really had run from 19 to 26, and I put that on my advanced trading service where you get to see exactly what I'm doing. I was looking for a breakout at 19. We got based at 18 for month after month after month. I said, once we get above here, I'm going to go long. And we did. And it rode up to around 26 and was starting to stall out. And actually, I'm pretty sure I got out of that trade. And then QE2 was announced, and I got right back in. I'm not afraid of making a mistake. I mean, making a 7 bucks in a futures contract is a pretty good move. But if I wouldn't have got back in at 26, I would have missed the 26 to 48 move, which I did not. But that's what QE2 did, 26 to 48. Will that happen the next time they announce a QE3 or 4? And you know, No, I do not expect that. I expect, again, a blip and a consolidation and probably a backing off, and then over time more of a steady state. Now, any major problem that no one could predict, we've all talked about possibilities, could send the metals on a run would just don't come back. But uh, those are rare events. Those are black swans. They could happen. And if that were the case, then obviously you'd want to have your position now. But that's my take on it. I wouldn't get too enthused about a QE3 announcement taking the metals far higher. I just don't see it. I left.